possible for the first time since 1998. I'm joined as always by David Norian. David, when you talk about this Kansas State team, you're talking about a team that's playing as well as anybody in the country right now. Yeah, I'm not sure Miami or Ohio State would want to look at this team right now. They're that hot. Right now, their defense, they're giving up 11 points a game. On offense, they're scoring 46 points a game. They're in the top two in the country in defense and offense right now. And offensively, the big difference this year has been the quarterback, L. Roberson. I mean, he's been absolutely dynamic, running the football, a very good passer down the football field. And, Sean, if he can break the ball in the secondary on the ground, he's as dangerous a runner as there is in the country. There's no question here at Missouri, this is a program that is on the rise under second-year head coach Gary Pinkle. The reason why they're on the verge of bowl eligibility is their redshirt freshman quarterback, Brad Smith. Yeah, everybody talks about Maurice Claret over at Ohio State. Well, Brad Smith has been every bit as dynamic. He needs one yard rushing to become only the second quarterback in the history of Division I NCAA football to pass for 2,000 yards and rush for 1,000 yards. I think he's going to have to have his best game of the year, though, Sean, for Missouri to come out with a win. Kansas State has dominated this rivalry in recent years. The Wildcats have won the last nine head-to-head. -head. Missouri trying to change that today. The kickoff from Columbia in a moment. Tracy. Tracy. What? What's the story? How about a little hustle? How about taking it easy? You think the world revolves around I you? i got a lot of teeth to brush. You're another pampered athlete. That's... Wally, no! No! Zerbiak! Zerbiak, get out here! Who's a lion? The ESPN.com players. Let's talk about sports. Gosh, Bob, sports talk is so darn serious. Sports are serious, yes. I know a place where sports aren't so serious. Where's that? Page two at ESPN.com. Page two is full of columns about the funny stuff in sports. Hey, where are you going? Home. I don't want page two to be the one that got away. <laughs> <laughs> Every Sunday on ESPN Classic, the greatest movies. Would you like to play football with us inmates? We're going to play the guards. About the greatest sports. In my book, we're going to be winners. Plus, you get real stories from real people. I was playing for all the kids who never played. Real actors with real moments. The crew actually blew the tag because they started giggling. Real classics where the world of sports and movies collide. Every Sunday night at 9 Eastern, only on ESPN Classic. We got out. We got big time. Come on and hit it. <laughs> Just a spectacular day here in mid-Missouri. Not a cloud in the sky overhead for row field. Kansas State up to number 10 in the rankings, their highest mark of the season. Trying to keep their streak against Mizzou alive. Missouri leads the all-time series, but Kansas State, as we noted a moment ago, has won the last nine. The last Missouri win came in 1992. 54 degrees. The wind out of the northwest at 10 miles per hour, and the forecast is for it to remain an absolutely delightful day. And a big crowd on hand watching Bill Snyder's team. He's in his 14th season as the architect of what is arguably the greatest turnaround in the history of college football. Gary Pinkle didn't inherit quite a downtrodden program as the one that was inherited by Bill Snyder but just two winning seasons for Missouri in the last 18 Pinkle trying to make them a consistent power and seems to have them on the right track Missouri won the toss and elected to receive the opening kickoff from Jared Bright the junior from Bakersfield California Shardanya Mitchell number 86 and Tyrone Roberson number 25 back deep at the goal line for Mizzou the breeze will be at the back of Bright as he kicks off. 
And we're underway. Final game of the regular season for both teams. Tyrone Roberson, the sophomore from St. Louis, did not reach the 20-yard line. He was banged down at the 19-yard line. Tackled by David Rose. There is a flag on offside. the return. Kicking team. K-State offside. And undoubtedly Gary Pinkle will have them do it again. And then try to get better field position. Randy Crystal is the referee leading our Big 12 officiating crew today. And Sean, if you look at what this Kansas State football team has done to Nebraska and Ohio, I, actually Iowa State the last two weeks, you'd say, hey, they're, they're going to come in, they're going to be a heavy favorite. But the last two times the Wildcats have visited Columbia, this Missouri team has given them fits. And if you go back to the 1998 season, the year that Kansas State lost in that double overtime game in the Big 12 championship game, almost played in the national championship game, they had to hold on late. It came in 10-0 and, and almost lost that game. The standings in the Big 12 North, Colorado has clinched the berth in the championship game, even if the Buffaloes lose to Nebraska by virtue of their victory head to head. And they will advance to the conference championship game. And Brighton will kick it off again. You mentioned Kansas State coming in off the victory over Nebraska, their largest victory ever against the Huskers last week in Manhattan, 49 to 13. In the game before that, they had their biggest win ever against Iowa State, 58 to 7. And in the game prior to that, they had their biggest win ever against Kansas, 64 to nothing. So Missouri is hoping that K-State doesn't repeat that history and post their largest margin of victory ever against their opponent for the fourth week in a row. Right. Drives it down to the five yard line. This time it's Shadanya Mitchell. And again, great coverage. And with the second kick, Missouri actually lost a couple of yards of field position. Daniel Davis made the tackle. And they'll spot the ball down at the 17 yard line. Brad Smith. The redshirt freshman quarterback, still just 18 years old. He's from Youngstown, Ohio. He'll turn 19 next month. And as David said, he needs one yard. Become the second quarterback in Division 1A history to have a 2,000-yard passing, 1,000-yard rushing season. Zach Abram, their featured back, runs out of bounds near the 22-yard line. Brian Hickman chased him out. Here's the AT&T wireless starting lineup on offense for Missouri. Abram, the lone back, they generally run out of the one back, three wide receiver set. Justin Gage, one of the best wide receivers in the country. Outlaw and James, the other wide outs, Ben Fredrickson will alternate with J.D. McCoy at tight end. Gain of five on second and five, the pass is batted down. Corey White. The senior knocked it down for K-State. The offensive line for Mizzou, Rob Drage, Tony Palmer, A.J. Ricker, Cliff Young, and Scott Paffrath. Ricker, the center, making his 34th straight start today. Third down and five. Four wide receivers, two to each side for Missouri. Smith, short throw, and the ball dropped. It was a low throw and almost a terrific catch by Justin Gage. Smith off target, and it's three and out for Missouri. Yeah, not a lot of success for the Missouri offense to open up this football game. And one thing Missouri's going to have to do, if they're going to have success on offense today, they're going to have to be able to throw the football. You cannot line up against this Kansas State defense and pound the ball at them on the ground. They're going to have to use the running game, Sean, as a bit of a changeup with Zach Aber. Todd Goschler. Hunting, he was pressed into emergency duty last week when their starting punter was injured in a warm-up drill. Booming kick back to the 29-yard line for Terrence Newman. He's going to take it all the way. Nobody even near him. Touchdown, Kansas State. Touchdown, Kansas State. 71 yards on the punt return.
I mean, this seam opens up immediately to the left side. And the Missouri Tiger coverage team came out of their responsibilities, out of their gaps. And Newman, that was a walk in the park. The fifth punt return for a touchdown for Kansas State this year. The second for Terrence Newman. And the extra point up and good from Joe Ream. Well, that didn't take long. The red hot Kansas State Wildcats score for the first time they handled the ball today. Keep him locked up in the trailer. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card, Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. ESPN's NFL Primetime. The whole day in football packed into one show. All oh, that wacky AFC. And he gets in! Chris Berman and Tom Jackson. All the score, stats, and highlights. He could go off the Every game, every finish. This is a ball club with great balance. If you missed it, if you saw it, if you just got to see it again. And he makes the catch. Wow. NFL Primetime, 730 Eastern, Sundays on ESPN. I'm Max Kellerman. I want to tell you about my new show, Around the Horn. The idea is simple. People here think the people here don't know anything about sports. And the people here hate all the teams from here. Around the Horn is going to bring sports experts from, from here, 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 and, and here, here together. together in a daily discussion about who's better than who and, and who knows, knows more. more. And I'm keeping score. Around the Horn, a full contact sports show, weekdays at 5 Eastern on Jeff Garcia leads San Fran. Philly depends on D to keep their hopes alive. Michaels and Madden to hit on Monday night. Well, the punt return by Terrence Newman for a touchdown. The 12th touchdown for Bill Snyder's defense or special teams this season. That's the most in the nation. Jared Bright kicks off. Vanya Mitchell again struggling against this terrific kickoff coverage. And again, Missouri will begin in poor field position at the 17 yard line. Maurice Thurman made the tackle. Here's the Kansas State defense brought to you by AT&T Wireless up front. Andrew Shaw, Tank Reese, Corey White and Henry Bryant. Terrific linebackers. The three nasty Texans. Brian Hickman, along with Terry Pierce and Josh Buell, Jordan Walker, Washington, and Newman, and it's an excellent secondary. After the play fake, Smith looking deep, and it is caught by Sean Coffey. He comes in in four wide receiver sets, and he's a big target for a play like that. 6'6, 220 pounds. First completion of the day for Smith and a big one, a 28-yard gain. And the Tigers going with a game plan of moving the pocket. They want to change their launch points. A nice fake to set up this play in the backfield. And Coffey getting his first start today, starting for Marcus James. Coming across on a deep route and does a great job of extending, keeping his hands away, catching the ball away from his body. From the 44, Zach Abram. Out to the 47 yard line, a gain of three for the junior from Lake St. Louis, Missouri. Coming off a terrific game last week against Texas A&M. Missouri won in double overtime down in College Station to keep their bowl hopes alive. And Abram in the second overtime got them 24 of their 25 yards rushing. Smith carried in from the one to give them the winning touchdown in the second extra session. Abram at 126 yards for the game against AM, his season high. Smith zips one again for Coffey. And the catch made. Now they're waving it off. Incomplete. Two officials ran in to spot the ball, but a third said no catch for Coffey. 
Bobby Walker again in coverage. Yeah, if you're going to beat the number 10 team in the country, you're going to have to make these plays. A good Coffee. call. Yeah, it is a good call. And that was that was not a catch and a beautiful ball from Smith in the pocket. And that's the type of passing game that Missouri's going to need out of their quarterback to have a chance to win the day. Coach Pingle says he's not surprised that Smith has blossomed into a star. He's just surprised that it's happened this quickly. Four man rush well defended and a long throw just over the head of Justin Gage Terrence Newman in coverage They're two of the best players in the country at their respective positions and there's an injury on the play a Missouri player down back at the 39 yard line it's J.D. McCoy who alternates a tight end with Ben Fredrickson as they tend to him let's check in with John Saunders in Times Square Stadium. John, USC and UCLA each have a chance to win the Pac-10. They need some help, though. Carson Palmer going deep here, 34 yards to Kareem Kelly. He hauls it in for the touchdown, and the Trojans are on the board first, leading 7 to nothing. Back to you. And we have a UCLA graduate who will be watching that very carefully all day, standing next to me. you have any predictions for your alma mater today, Mr. Norrie? Well, I... I before the prediction, I got to take care of my business first here. I mean, we're doing Missouri, Kansas State, but we'll keep an eye on it so you're from up. time to time. No, I, I think that USC is one of the top three or four teams in the country the way they're playing right now. I think UCLA really has their hands full, and I think if uh, well, give me the top two or three, because you already said you know Kansas State, Miami, or Ohio State doesn't want to play them. Now you have USC up there. You can only have three or four teams in your top three or four. Well, it looks like Miami's going to be playing Ohio State, but I think Kansas State and USC are two of the top five teams in the country the way they're playing down the stretch here in November. Here's Goshler to punt again. His first one was returned 71 yards by Terrence Newman. This time he calls for a fair catch. He had plenty of room. Maybe he's still tired. A 44-yard punt and no return. K-State on offense for the first time already leading. Seven to nothing. We don't win this game. Our dreams are shattered. We're gonna be number one, baby. ESPN's The Season brings you sports from a different angle. That's a team right there, baby. Close enough to feel the tension. Go out there, beat Army. Tense enough to feel the heat. Hot enough to explode. You're telling us! Thursday nights, Southern Fried Football. Come on now, make a big work. Working out with the SEC. <laughs> the Season, SEC Football. Midnight Eastern, Thursday nights on ESPN. Rated E for everyone. This is what it feels like when I start training threes. This is what you'll see when you bring it in my lane. This is what it feels like to be dunked on. This is what it feels like to play in the NBA. NBA 2K3. For the extra point, and the win. Quit moving your hands. What's the matter, Tom? A little pressure? Quit it. Snow. Green Bay. December. Lambeau Field. Come on. Pull the trigger. Let's go, Jackson. Pull the trigger, All man. Right. All right. Just get a choke. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, and investments rely on the strength of Pacific Life. By Circuit City, we know how you feel. And by AT&T Wireless. AT&T Wireless brings you M-Life. Darren Sproles on the first play from scrimmage for Kansas State. He's tackled by Jason Simpson after a gain of four to the 14. The AT&T wireless starting lineup on offense. L. Roberson, junior from Baytown, Texas. We'll talk about coming off a big game. Certainly that's the case for Roberson last week against Nebraska. Career best 228 yards rushing. He scored three touchdowns. Included in that game, a 91-yard touchdown run. The longest run for a touchdown 
by a K-State player since 1948. The pass incomplete and almost intercepted through the hands of James Terry. And Michael Harden made a diving attempt but couldn't come up with the pickoff. Aaron Sproles with Travis Wilson leading the way. Thomas Hill the tight end. Taco Wallace and James Terry, their two leading receivers. Up front, Thomas Barnett makes his 42nd consecutive start. A very good line with Lecky Washington, Johnson, and Miller. We'll also see Ben Reddily and Draven Burks substituting in along the yacht line today. Third down and six. And the crowd trying to help Mizzou. Roberson to the far side. It is caught. And will it be a first down? Yes, it will. Just across the 20. James Terry with his 20th catch of the season. A.J. Kincaid had the coverage. When the Kansas State coaches talk about the big difference over last year with this offense, it's the passing of L. Roberson. I mean, he's really come of age, both on the field and off the field. They don't like to throw the ball much, but when they do, it's an effective passing game. A nice job using the body to screen the football from the defender. Back to the run with the diminutive Sproles. He stopped. At the line of scrimmage, perhaps a half yard. Marcus King and Sean Doyle led the defense. And here's John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. All right, it's a huge day in college football for this guy, Larry Johnson. He has a chance to become the ninth player to get to 2,000 yards rushing in one season. He already has 77 yards on five carries, 11 on that touchdown. They lead 7 0. He's one of the eight semifinalists for the Doak Walker Award which goes to the nation's best running back. And a big weekend for all of the Doak Walker candidates who are in action. Here comes a blitz. Time for Roberson. Now he throws on the move. It's caught for another first down out at the 33-yard line. Again, it's James Terry. Michael Harden had the coverage. A gain of 12 for K-State. The defense for Missouri up front their best player is Keith Wright 23 tackles for loss to lead the conference Bynum Mosley and Mills the other starters the linebackers are Doyle with Sweat and Simpson who plays the whip position and in the secondary the corners are Kincaid and Harden and the rover Taurus Ferguson with Marcus King the free safety they've been a little bit suspect this year in pass defense K-State Predominantly a running team, but taking advantage of the weakness of the defense of Missouri by passing more than you would expect here early. A keeper by Roberson out to the 37-yard line. Atia Ellison made the tackle for Missouri. And when you talk about suspect, Sean, they've been a little bit more than just suspect at times on defense. They've given up over 575 yards of total offense four games over the course of the season, but they turned things around last week against A&M. Held the Aggies to only 36 yards rushing on 31 carries. Five minutes played, 7-0 K-State. A big hole for Sproles, and he's across the 50-yard line to the Missouri 49. Sean Doyle made the tackle. A gain of 14 for Sproles. He rushed for a career high 159 against Nebraska last week. He is on a string of seven straight 100 yard rushing games. And how about the numbers for the Kansas State offense? Fourth of the nation in rushing and second in scoring, and just a fraction of a point below Boise State. And you, and you combine that efficiency on both sides of the football with what they're doing in the special teams. We've already seen a punt return for a touchdown. Sproles belted down behind the line of scrimmage by Antoine Bynum. The senior from St. Louis, another terrific player up front. He has nine sacks this season with two more. He'd tie Justin Smith's single season Missouri record. Now this Tiger defense has got to try to take care of the Kansas State running game first. And the way you do that is you use numbers. You get eight, nine men up on the line of scrimmage. You have to take some chances with L. Roberson throwing the football, take some chances of giving up some big plays, and also take a few risks blitzing in rundowns. Second and 11, and a flag thrown before the snap. The umpire threw it right in the middle of the offensive line. Have some movement. Generally, when they stop it, it's against the offense. Prior to the snap, 
false start on the offense. Be a five yard penalty and remain second down. Bill Snyder's team looking for its 10th minute of the season. He said that's not really a meaningful milestone except for the fact that they're coming off a six and six year last year after they lost in the bowl game to Syracuse. For them, that was a little bit of a down year just to get back into double digits and wins would be a big step back in the right direction for this program that's made a habit in recent years of winning in double digits. The screen to Sproles. Nice cutback. First down and more. And a late flag thrown right where the tackle was made. Jason Simpson made the tackle. And we talked about Sproles being small. They listed him at 5'7". He's probably closer to 5'6". But he is very strong. Bench press is close to 400 pounds. Runs very hard. Low center of gravity. Plays with his pads low, which coaches love. And that's a 28-yard gain if it stands. I walked by him in the hotel this morning. He can't believe this kid even plays football. Five foot seven, 170 pounds. Looks like this play is going to come back. Take a look from the end zone. But keep an eye as they set up the screen pass out to the right side. Keep an eye at the change of direction talents in number 43. I mean, that cut, a bit reminiscent of a. Young Barry Sanders at Oklahoma State. He can start and stop on a dime. Great lateral ability running the football. The penalty walked off from the spot of the hold, so the ball moved back to the 41 yard line of Missouri. And it'll be second down and short. Second and two. And the handoff to Sproles through a nice hole and a first down. He got chopped down to the 32 yard line by A.J. Kincaid. Next Saturday, what a lineup. Thanksgiving weekend, college football at 1 Eastern. Many of you will see Ken Dorsey lead undefeated Miami against Syracuse. Some will see West Virginia at Pitt. Then at 8 Eastern, number eight Notre Dame against number seven USC. Others get Florida and Florida State. That's next Saturday on ABC Sports, the class of college football. Wildcats on the move, an impressive drive. Sproles again, bounces off tacklers. Terrific run, weaving his way through traffic to the 17-yard line. 16 more on the ground for Sproles. He's well on his way to another 100-yard rushing game. Now he may only pack 170 pounds, but he has great pad level, and he can get lost in between, behind those big offensive linemen. Very tough to bring him down one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, you've got to make a tackle low on his body, and it's tough getting underneath that pad level when he goes five foot seven. And that's 41 yards today now for Sproles, giving him 1,273. And he surpasses by 10 yards the single season school rushing record set by Josh Scobie last year. Timeout called by Kansas State. Midway through the first quarter, Wildcats lead 7 0, and they're on the move. Looking for more. Come on, let's go, let's go. Hi. He was in my garage drinking paint. Get in here. I'm sorry. This is not going to happen again. Come on. You can't do this. Be there for the three pointers, the in your face dunks, and the spectacular buzzer beaters. With the ESPN Full Court College Basketball Pay-Per-View Package, you get maximum college basketball with more than 450 additional games from top conferences and coverage of the first two rounds of the NCAA Women's Tournament. Will you be there? The ESPN Full Court College Basketball Pay-Per-View Package. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-DIRECTV or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. The games that became classics. The athletes that became legends. The moments that became history. They're all on ESPN Classic. Explore the best in sports history through programs that take you inside the game, the life, 
the moment like no one else can. <laughs> Call your cable or satellite provider and experience ESPN Classic. This holiday season, there's only one guy tough enough to take on Arnold Schwarzenegger. According to Jim's Jim Belushi. I know what you're thinking. Jingle all the way, ABC Tonight. Out of the timeout, the 12th play of the drive upcoming for Kansas State. They started at their own 10. They're at the Missouri 17. They lead 7 to nothing on a punt return for a touchdown by Terrence Newman. Sproles couldn't find the hole. Stutter stepped and got taken down by Antoine Bynum. It'll be second down and nine. We remind you again next Saturday the terrific lineup number one Miami against Syracuse, Sumsey, West Virginia, and Pittsburgh. And then at eight o'clock in prime time, Notre Dame and USC. Some of the country will get the Battle of Florida, Florida, and Florida State. Great lineup Saturday on ABC Sports, the class of college football. Sproles spun around and then pulled back from the 15 yard line by C.J. Mosley. A redshirt freshman from Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, who's come on lately and done a terrific job for this defense, according to their coordinator, Matt Eberflus. Yeah, this is a super play by Mosley. And watch, he'll, he'll grab just a piece of the jersey from behind, and that's a lot of strength in those mitts to bring down Sproles, the way he hits a crease at the line of scrimmage. C.J. Mosley, Calvin Michael Mosley Jr., his dad, Calvin Sr., is in the U.S. Army. Third down, the crowd roars. Roberson on a rollout. Throws it to the corner of the end zone, way too high. Looking for Taco Wallace. Michael Harden and Marcus King had double coverage. And Bill Snyder sends the field goal team on. And they've had an up and down season with their kickers. Here's Joe Ream, who has brought some stability lately, eight out of ten in field goals, although he has missed five PATs out of 49. Mike Wilson is the snapper. Travis Brown, the holder, a 32-yard try from the left hash mark. And it is good right down the middle. Ream now nine for nine this year inside 40 yards. Ten nothing. Kansas State leads here in the first quarter. Let's check in with John Saunders in Times Square Stadium. Well, you've got some quick scoring in your game, Sean, but not like this one. This is Carson Palmer again, back to pass. He runs out of a pile and takes off. Gets it down to about the one yard line, which would set up a Justin Fargus touchdown run, and USC has a 21-0 lead 10 minutes into the game. Well, well, how do you, you feel? You, you <laughs> predicted the big day for USC, but as an alum of UCLA, would you rather be right about the prediction or would you rather see your old alma mater be Sean, victorious? We're, we're paid to be unbiased up here. Yes. But uh, that game's looking a lot like the game last year, the 27 zip shutout that the Trojans laid on the Bruins. And, and you know, Carson Palmer's finally delivering on that promise. Right? And after that. Freshman sophomore year when he got injured up at Oregon a lot of people thought it would come sooner. An impressive scoring drive they took more than seven minutes off the clock the only disappointment for K State it resulted in a field goal and not a touchdown. So here's Jared Bright. He was also pitched for the K State baseball team. Drives it down to the goal line taken there by. Donya Mitchell and again the kickoff coverage outstanding by K State. They stopped Mitchell at the 15 yard line. Led by Jerry McLeod, the reserve defensive back. The help from Marcus Patton. Now let's take a look at the Dodge defensive playbook. And we talked about Missouri having to make big plays on defense to stop this number two rated in the country offense. They're going to need plays like this from Mosley. Look at him slant to the left side. And then make a heroic play getting a piece of the jersey on Sproles. And that's those are the type of plays the front four is going to have to make to even have a chance 
to stay with the Wildcats in this football game. Incomplete pass. Gage was out of bounds. He caught it in a flag thrown near Zach Abron, who might have been guilty of holding, and he was, as Smith was on the rollout. And we'll see if they elect to take the penalty. Holding on the offense. He had the distance to the goal. Replay first down. They will just engage his numbers. Not only does he lead Big 12 receivers this year, but that's a school record for receptions in one season, surpassing the 75 Victor Bailey had back in 1992. He's Missouri's all-time leader in career receptions as well with 198. First and 17, and a handoff to Abram, and he's dropped for a loss by Andrew Schull. The junior from Webb City, Missouri, back at his home state. Now of Webb City High School, the same school that produced Brent Wistrom, who started in Nebraska and has gone on to the NFL with the Rams. Now he's just having a lights out season. And big number 98 comes into this game with 14 tackles behind the line of scrimmage and one of the great defensive end penetrators that you'll see in college football this season. And they continue with the conservative approach. With very poor field position and very little room for Abram as he ran into Terry Pierce, the middle linebacker, the junior from Fort Worth, Texas. All three starting linebackers are Texans, Hickman and Buell, as well from Texas. Probably as good a linebacker unit as you'll see across the country. And Gary Pinkle in a very delicate situation here early. A nice stop by his defense, forcing the field goal on the last possession, but you don't want to give up a turnover and let Kansas State get run, go and run away and hide on it. Smith on the run gets out to the nine gets him some breathing room and he also becomes the second quarterback now in Division one a history to have 2000 yards plus passing and 1000 yards rushing in the same season. Woody Dantzler did it for Clemson last year. So congratulations to Smith now up to 1,003 yards rushing with that game. And a lot of people have thought Woody Dantzler should have received a lot more serious consideration a year ago for the Heisman Trophy. What a season he had last year. Goschler not as good a punt this time. Newman trying to get outside. And cannot turn the corner. He's driven out of bounds along the near sideline. And a flag thrown where the tackle was made. James Kinney delivered the hit. 35-yard punt, two-yard return. Crowd groaning because they are anticipating that's a late hit out of bounds call. Didn't look like it from here. Well, that is the call. And they take a look as Newman heads for the sideline and it looks like that hit takes place inbound. Now that's a terrible call if well he led with the helmet that's probably what it's about. Oh but it's but certainly I'm, not out of bounds. I mean that's that's a great actually that's a great form tackle you're taught to get your helmet in front. I mean that's yeah, you're going to have some helmet to helmet contact in football you know whether it's a college or the pro level I thought that was a very solid special teams play and that's a poor call. I mean, he, if anything, he lays his helmet on the shoulder pad first, though. Sproles spurts through another hold down to the 19 yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And by AT&T Wireless. AT&T brings you M Life, your mobile life made better. Kansas State dominating every opponent lately and certainly owning this first quarter today here in Columbia. Second and three from the Missouri 19. The option to the right. Roberson keeps it and is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Keith Wright, the senior from Sacramento, their best defensive lineman. He had four tackles for a loss against Texas A&M 
last week in their upset win as Missouri held A&M to just 36 yards rushing one week after the Aggies upset Oklahoma. And Missouri employs a 4-4 defensive front an eight man front and Kansas State operating against an eight man front doesn't bother them. They go with the option play. They don't have a problem pounding you inside. This team has success no matter what defensive structure you show. On third and three the pitch to Sproles and he stops short of the first down brought down right at the line of scrimmage by A.J. Kincaid the cornerback the red shirt freshman from St. Louis who made his first career start last week at A&M and had five tackles in the ballgame and when you go up against a great option attack like Kansas State's your cornerbacks have to be great tacklers and that's a big time play by A.J. Kincaid coming up and forcing and making a tackle in the open field against a great tailback. There's Joe Ream who connected from 32 yards moments ago. This is a 37 yard try from the other side. He connected from the left hash mark. This is from the right. And he pulled it wide left. Well, even though Kansas State has had a dramatic edge in play. Here in the first quarter, David, if you're a Missouri fan, you have to feel pretty good about the fact that it's just 10 to nothing. Yeah, they come up with a, a stop on this possession. They came up with a, a forced field goal try that was good on the last possession, and Gary Pinkle has managed to get his troops to maintain touch and feel with this Kansas State team. And if one thing Missouri's proven on offense this year is they've been able to come back against the big boys, big comebacks against Colorado, Nebraska, Iowa State, so they're still in this football game. One of the four wide receivers set they handed off to the backup tailback T.J. Leon and a good gain of five out to the 25 tomorrow Annika Sorenstam Kari Webb and Sayri Pak head a field of the LPGA's top 30 money winners don't miss final round coverage of the ADT championship tomorrow at 3 Eastern noon Pacific right here on ABC Sports. After the second round Annika had a one shot lead. Brad Smith kept it and got a half a yard. He was not heavily recruited out of Cheney High School in Youngstown, Ohio. Matter of fact, this Missouri coaching staff at the time was at Toledo, and they were uh, recruiting Brad Smith to come play for Toledo. Then when the staff moved here, they continued to recruit him to come to Missouri. He said his only other options at the Division I level were Bowling Green and Youngstown State. He was not heavily recruited. They're 0 for 3 on third down. And it's batted down by Terrence Newman. Intended for Darius Outlaw. And that's a super break on the football by Newman. And when you talk to the Kansas State defensive coaches, they talk about Newman as a first round pick. You know, the receiver shows in the flat, appears he's open, and then the break on the ball by number four. And Brad Smith probably lucky to get that one back. Newman already one punt return for a touchdown. He has scored on a pass reception this season. On two punt returns on a kickoff return for a touchdown. He returned a blocked extra point for a score against USC. He scored just about every way imaginable. Nice punt. Goschler and what a bounce he got. It looked like it would go out of bounds at the 25. It bounced back to the left and rolled dead at the 15 yard line. A 60 yard punt. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hi, everybody, Dick Vitale. Hey, December 17th, the Continental Airlines Arena, the Jimmy B Classic, Gonzaga against North Carolina State at 7 p.m., 9 p.m., Cincinnati and Oregon with their great one two punch, Luke Jackson and Luke Brittenauer. Hey, log on to Ticketmaster now for tickets or call 201. 507 or 212-307-7171. Hey, a portion of the proceeds benefits the B Foundation for Cancer Research. It's going to be awesome, baby. Hey! Hey! and chives and black pepper and red pepper and white pepper and some Cajun spices and I put it all together and everything. So I really hope you like it. And the brownies in particular. I went and I'm... I went and I'm... I made... You know, and I got the... ESPN.
Weekend College Game Day, presented by Discover Card, Saturdays, 1030 a.m. In 1954, in Junction, Texas, Paul Bear Bryant put 115 football players through hell. We're going to work now. You damn near killed my friend! He ain't quitting. But those who survived lived to become champions. One heart lead. That is what we've been looking for ever since we arrived. ESPN Original Entertainment presents The Junction Boys. Saturday, December 14th, 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Hey, Coach, Chris, how you doing, man? Alrighty. Number 84, yeah, how you doing? Man. Hey, how you doing, pal? Good to see you. Bill Good Parcells. You. Kind of a bummer, huh? You leave New England, Patriots win the Super Bowl. Ouch, that hurts. See you guys later. See you, yeah, yeah. See you. Good to see you. Good job, boy. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Kansas State begins the second quarter with the ball. They've dominated their opponents in the second quarter this year. They've outscored their opponents in every quarter. But by far their biggest advantage has come in second quarters this year. They start this possession from their own 15. Sproles stopped after a one yard gain. Flagged down to the line of scrimmage. Keith Wright with another tackle. This Kansas State offense is so multiple in terms of their sets and formations and the way their offensive coordinator Ron Hudson can attack teams. I'm going to be moved back five yards here but put tremendous strain on the Nebraska defense a week ago. At the conclusion of today's game we will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a one thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Missouri took the penalty so it'll be first and 15 from the 10 yard line. Sproles again tripped up just shy of the 15 yard line. Well last week against Nebraska in the big win for K-State they did not attempt a pass until nearly midway through the second quarter. As Ron Hudson said, well, when you're running as we were, why bother to pass? And they're capable of that, where they can just hand it off and run on every down, and you know it's coming, and you still can't stop. Well, what's them. so tough is you also have Roberson at the quarterback position running the option. You can leave a man unblocked, or you can run Roberson on planned runs where you pick up an extra block. Here's Sproles again. They're ready for him that time, and Antoine Bynum threw him down. Good penetration. Henry Sweat, the linebacker, also up there pressuring the play. And it'll be third down and long, third and about 11. And Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator for Missouri, said we're going to have to throw everything at him. Numbers, blitzes, take risks. We've got to take away the running game. And the last thing a defensive coordinator wants to see is an offense dominate and control on the ground throughout an afternoon, and Missouri pulling out all the stops. On third down and 11, a screen and Sproles has a lot of running room. And a first down. Now the bounds at the 29 yard line. Torres Ferguson chased him out. We talk about the ability to start and stop. How about stop and start? And it swings the ball outside, the reverse spin move to the outside, and then just to race for the chains. The Sproles is not only a dangerous running back carrying the football but he's very dangerous coming out of pass protection and getting out and forcing things in the passing game. 
And they give it to the fullback. Just the 16th carry of the season for Travis Wilson, the junior from Howell, Michigan, who transferred from Michigan State and sat out last season. He was tackled by James Kinney. Travis made such an impression on his teammates during the season last year that he sat out. He was voted a captain for this year, but unfortunately he got into some difficulty off the field in trouble with the law and had his captaincy stripped and had to apologize to his teammates. Very difficult time for him. Taco Wallace, the reception. Good for a first down for K-State. Marcus King and Michael Harden made the tackle. The Wildcats are on the move again, first and 10 out at the 41-yard line. This K-State offense had its conception or with Michael Bishop and Ron Hudson and Bill Snyder, Taylor making that offense to Bishop's talents. And Bishop could throw the football. Roberson showing he can throw the football as well this year. And, and this afternoon he's come out hot. Not Pass incomplete. Ball. The quick throw from Roberson in front of Taco Wallace. Roberson thought that Wallace was going to be heading up the field and he was stationary waiting for the pass. That was the first misfire of the day for Roberson, but I've been impressed with his footwork and also his accuracy from the pocket. Second and ten. On the rollout, diving attempt made by Wallace, incomplete pass. Taco almost came up with it. We asked Doug Dull, the SID at Kansas State, how he got the nickname Taco. He says, Taco won't tell anybody how he got the nickname. His real name is Lawrence. Ball hits the ground. Good call by the officials on the sideline. And a lot of people watching this football game, they say, hey, how can Roberson miss that ball that badly to the outside and low? And got the cornerback beat, but a lot of times you have linebackers underneath, and Roberson had to throw that ball wide of the outside linebacker. Derek Evans in and an extra wide receiver set another screen, and Sproles couldn't catch it. And that one looked promising if he had caught it. You would think. In these long yardage situations now, Missouri might be a little more alert to the screen since we've seen it a couple of times already. As a quarterback, you have to be accurate. You have to put a handle on the football on screen passes. And it becomes a little bit more difficult when you're throwing to a five foot seven tailback. It's one of the rare situations where I think Sproles height hurts him a little bit. Not quite as big a target coming out of the backfield in the pass game. Travis Brown the punt. They came after a very high spiraling kick. Oh my goodness. James called for a fair catch. There wasn't a white shirt within 10 yards of him. A 50 yard punt. Missouri will take over at the 10 yard line. How you doing? This looks great. Seth. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Great. Go Canes. Right. Ouch. Brownies. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card, Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. Tracy. Tracy. What? What's the story? How about a little hustle? How about taking it easy? You think the world revolves around I you? I got a lot of tape to brush. You're another pampered athlete. That's... Wally, no! No! Zerbiak! Zerbiak, get out here! There's a line. I'm Max Kellerman. I want to tell you about my new show, Around the Horn. The idea is simple. People here think the people here don't know anything about sports. And the people here hate all the teams from here. Around the Horn is going to bring sports experts from, from here, 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 and, and here, here together, together in a daily discussion about who's better, better than, than who whom, and, and who knows, knows more. more. And I'm keeping score. Around the Horn, a full contact sports show, weekdays at 5 Eastern on ESPN. We don't win this game. Our dreams are shattered. We're going to be number one, baby. ESPN's The Season brings you sports from a different angle. That's the team, 
game right there, baby. Close enough to feel the tension. Go out there, beat Army. Tense enough to feel the heat. Hot enough to explode. You're killing us! Thursday nights, Southern Fried Football. Come on now, make a big of work. Working out with the SEC. <laughs> the season, SEC Football. Midnight Eastern, Thursday nights on ESPN. Bonnie Hunt gives thanks because she's got Tom Hanks. You are stunning. Do you want to make out? Tom Hanks guest stars on a new Life with Bonnie, Tuesday on ABC. We're taking a look at that last punt return opportunity. Look at Marcus James right here. And look at all the room he's going to have. I mean, that's a big chasm right there, 15, 20 yards. You run the ball back. You got to take a shot there. There's Zach Abram trying to get outside. And he's down at the 14 yard line, a gain of four for Abram, who's been playing with a partially torn ligament in his left knee. Coach Pinkle compares him to Jerome Bettis. Yeah, Abram's. Gary Pinkle tight back. You won't see him moving east west much. Definitely a north south runner, packs a punch. And you got to be careful of your safety coming up to hit Zach Abram because he's liable to deliver a blow on you. Kansas State has seven first downs. Missouri just one. Looking for its second, the pass too long for Darius Outlaw. A converted quarterback made a very nice adjustment to wide receiver. Four catches for the season for Outlaw. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. We want to know how many states have more NFL franchises than Division I football programs? I, I have no earthly idea on that one, Sean. Don't even ask. Third down. Missouri 0 for 4 on third downs today. On the rollout, the catch made. And where will they mark the ball? They will mark it beyond the 20th first down for Sean Coffey. He was banged out of bounds by Randy Jordan. Sean Coffey has played a pretty prominent role in this football game. Gets his start over Marcus James at the Z. The big target, about six foot six. And that's a nice little participation route on the outside. Takes the curl the inside, slides outside, gives his quarterback Brad Smith a nice picture to throw to for the first down. On the delay, Abram cut it inside. And that's a gain of one. Tackled by Josh Buell, their leading tackler for the year. He had 125 entering today's game. Sean McDonough, David Norrie. For Field in Columbia, Missouri, on a spectacular afternoon here in late November, 54 degrees at kickoff. What a day. Number 10, Kansas State, looking for its 10th win of the year. Then fifth in a row, Missouri, trying for its sixth win of the year to get the six and six. They would become bowl eligible with an upset win today. Smith takes off and is tripped up short of the first down at the 28. And he gotten away from Brian Hickman. He had a lot more running room ahead of him. Now this is what Brad Smith looks for. Missouri, this is a call pass play, but when he catches a defense in man to man coverage, if he can break that front four, that defensive pass rush, there's a lot of green to operate. And that was just a terrific play by Brian Hickman. And Hickman's been making those plays all year long for the Wildcats from his linebacking position. Smith in trouble. And could not get away. He is swung down by Henry Bryant. Crowd thought that was a little bit too much. Brian Hickman also got through the line of scrimmage. And Mizzou will be forced to punt again. That came awfully close to being one of those situations where you pick the quarterback up off his feet and throw him to the ground. I mean, if there's going to be a 15 yarder called in this game, so far it should have been right there in the NFL I think there's no question that would have been flagged and there's Todd Goshler junior from San Diego California on the punt 
Terrence Newman back forward. He's looking into the sun. Low line drive kick. Newman from the 29. Tripped up for a loss on the return. Flag down. Michael Harden made the nice tackle. A 43 yard putt. A loss of four yards on the return. And that flag, flag down early. the 44 yard line. The flag was thrown before the catch was made on the punt return. For a hold against K State. You should take him back 10 yards from. The spot of the actually the final spot on the play. It'll be a 10 yard penalty. First down. Time out here in Columbia. Kansas State leads 10 to nothing. On ESPN Classic, remember how perfect we can be. Nicholas hit a tee shot that only gravity kept on this plane. Discover. It wasn't that Cal Ripken didn't get hurt. He was hurt all the time. How human we really are. There were times where I didn't think I was going to be able to walk again. These are their stories. This is the award-winning Sports Century. 8 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. Get ESPN Classic. Call your local cable or satellite provider now. The ESPN.com players. Where's the cable? should be right here. It looks like you got the wrong information. Now when it comes to sports, because I got insider on ESPN.com. I get exclusive news first, then in-depth analysis, and 300 links to sports stories. 300 links. I guess insider is a mountain of information. Every Sunday on ESPN Classic, the greatest movies. Would you like to play football with us inmates? We're going to play the guards. About the greatest sports. In my book, we're going to be winners. Plus, you get real stories from real people. I was playing for all the kids who never played. Real actors with real moments. The crew actually blew the tag because they started giggling. Real classics where the world of sports and movies collide. Every Sunday night at 9 Eastern, only on ESPN Classic. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light, cold down easy. And by Affleck, ask about it at work. Quarterback draw, Roberson outside with running room. And out of bounds with a first down at the 37-yard line. Michael Harden chased him out, but that's a 21-yard gain. On the run for the junior from Baytown, Texas, L. Roberson. When you see a single back set with Kansas State, that means one thing. Look out for the quarterback running the football. This is just a planned counter play. They'll go with an ISO play with the quarterback running. Option out of one back. But as a defense, you better be alert when they go to single back because it, that means Roberson is going to be running the football. The fullback, Victor Mann. That surprised the Tiger defense. First down out to the 50-yard line, a gain of 13, longest of the season for Mann. Here's John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. Well, it's been a struggling year for Michigan State, and things getting worse today against Penn State. Brian Johnson feels the punt at his 19, and then is not even touched. Nobody from the Spartans gets even close as he goes 81 yards for the touchdown. Penn State up 21 nothing. On their way to their ninth victory of the season. They fake the option then Roberson faded back. He was flushed. Throws it up for grabs and it is intercepted by R.J. Jones. Well, L. Roberson had Terry open for 20 yards, but was not able to get the ball off in the pocket. And what a recovery in the secondary. I mean, Roberson faces the pressure, and he had to escape. And that extra time did not allow him to throw the ball on time. That was a touchdown for Kansas State. Team high fourth interception of the year for Jones. 
The other three were all in the same game against Troy State. That tied the Missouri in Big 12 conference records for interceptions in one game. Abram very nearly tackled in the end zone for a safety. A loss of three yards back to the one. Thomas Houchin and Brian Hickman. Houchin, number 94, back up defensive end, but he plays a lot. Junior from Sanger, Texas, out of Sanger High School, where he earned 19 letters in high school. Three in football, four each in track, basketball, and golf. Three in baseball, one in powerlifting. Out of the end zone, Smith throws, caught, lunging for the marker, Sean Coffey, but they're going to mark him out back at the 10-yard line, short of the first down by four yards. Coffey had only nine catches for the season, and six of those were against Troy State in mop-up duty before today, but he's been a regular target today. Another slide route to the outside, and he's looked special this afternoon. I mean, just using that big frame to stretch out for the first down and that's about the only option that Kansas State hasn't had an answer for on defense. Third catch of the day for Coffey. Smith weaving through traffic did not appear to get to the first down. Needed the 14. They'll mark him at the 13. Rashad Washington with the hit. And Missouri will be forced to punt with 7-13 left in the half trailing 10 to nothing. Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator for Kansas State, has come out with a great defensive game plan. And you can look at that drive chart. It's very evident. And what he's done is he has taken Brad Smith out of the football game in terms of Brad Smith's feet and his ability to pick up yards down the field. And as a result, Missouri's been pretty one-dimensional. And when they're one-dimensional, their passing game suffers as well. Forcing them to punt for the sixth time. A line drive kick taken by Newman at the 46. And he's down at the Missouri 43. Tackled by Brandon Smith, the 41 yard punt. Can't imagine how big that was uh, for Canada to, uh, to win that gold medal. And mm -hmm. We waited a long time, and now after 50 years, that the gold medal's back. So it's Tell great. me something. What kind of a. Uh, what kind of cheese you got there? What kind of cheese? Yeah, what kind of cheese? American. That's right. American cheese. Yeah, American, American cheese. American cheese. Coming in December, two of the nation's premier conferences collide. The ACC. Maryland wins their first ever national championship. The Big Ten. Indiana suddenly lights Super, it up. Super 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 Only one conference gets the glory. The ACC Big Ten Challenge begins Monday, December 2nd, only on ESPN and ESPN2. Hey, can you guys give me a hand? Sure. Yeah. Hey, Corey, can you help me? Yeah, let's go. Hey, can you guys help me for a sec? Oh, what are we doing? Does he know where he's going? Kenyon, what are we doing? I blew a fuse in my room. What? Yeah, oh, yeah, you blew a fuse. What? It's scary down here. Ridiculous, man. This is so man. Man. It's such a waste of time. Don't close the door. Get me out of here. Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Mark O'Meara, Fred Couples in a Thanksgiving weekend classic. The ConAgra Food Skins Game begins Saturday on ABC. Earlier we asked you the Affleck trivia question. How many states have more NFL franchises than the Division I A football schools? The answer just one. Missouri with the Chiefs and the Rams. The University of Missouri, the only Division I A football program in this state. Victor Mann on first down for K-State. Down to the 40, a gain of three. When we spoke with Gary Pinkle about this Missouri program and why he decided to come here when he was a very hot coach after 10 successful seasons at Toledo, that's one of the things he talked about. It's the only Division I-A school in the state, and there's a lot of talent in the state if you can get them to stay here. He talked about the upgrade in facilities. They put about $50 million into their football facilities the last few years. Talked about the conference 
being one of the best. Talked about the academic reputation of this school. And he felt there wasn't any reason why they could not be a winner here. There's Roberson carrying for a first down to the 32 yard line. Jason Simpson Robertson. made the tackle. Let's check in with John Saunders in Times Square Stadium. Sean, take a look at this great play by Michael Bulwer. NC State faking the field goal. Chris Young fumbles it. Bulwer picks it up with one hand while it's wobbling around. Never breaks stride. Takes it 84 yards for the touchdown. Florida State up 7-3. NC State trying to stop the bleeding after that 9-0 start. Three straight losses. Sproles the ball carrier inside the 30 to the 28. A gain of four. Sean Doyle made the tackle for Missouri. We're talking about the improvement of this Missouri program. They won four last year in Pingle's first year. They've won five, but really the difference to those who follow closely is night and day. They've had a lot of close calls this year against ranked teams. They were ahead in the second half against Colorado, Oklahoma, and Iowa State and wound up losing all three games. It might be a much different season for them. Yeah, they managed to hang on to even one or two of those. Victor Mann driven back by Sean Doyle and James Kinney. Yeah, against Oklahoma and Colorado, they had leads in the fourth quarter. And you know, Gary Pinkle, we talked about his background. He played under Don James at Kent State in the early 70s. He's a co-captain with Jack Lambert on that Kent State team. And 1984 to 1990 coached no less than five NFL quarterbacks that went on from the University of Washington. Including Mark Brunel and Hugh Millen, Chris Chandler. He was a great quarterback coach and offensive coordinator before he came a head coach. On the option, Roberson stayed in bounds and picked up the first down. Finally went out after he passed the marker at the 20 yard line. Yeah, L. Roberson has such a nice feel for the option. He's got an offensive line getting pushed back in the backfield, tapers back, and then what a tightrope. Act to pick up the first down just beyond the chains. And they actually short changed him by a couple of yards. They spotted him out at the 20. It looked like he made it past the 20 without going out of bounds. Nevertheless, 38 yards rushing for the day for Roberson on five carries. First and 10, Wildcats leading 10 to nothing. Sproles lost the football and got it back at the 12 yard line. These two teams are both excellent in turnover ratio. Both are plus 15 for the year. Time for the Pacific Life game summary. The first score of the game, Terrence Newman, the punt return, untouched, 71 yards. That made it 7 to nothing with the extra point. A field goal made it 10 to nothing. K-State was looking for more when R.J. Jones intercepted a pass. At the four, there's Sproles, touchdown! A 12 yard run for Darren Sproles. And there's an injured Tiger on the play. A.J. Kincaid, starting cornerback, redshirt freshman, down on the field. And Kincaid got his first start last week. Pretty impressive, redshirt freshman, but look at the work up front. And Missouri's defense starting to spend a lot of time on the field here in the first half. They're getting not much help from their offense and it's only a matter of time against Kansas State you've got to move the ball against this K-State defense and give your own defense some time on the sideline and it's and it's getting to be danger time for Gary Pinkle in Missouri here late in the second quarter 16th rushing touchdown of the season for Sproles Pinkle concerned about the score and about A.J. Kincaid Friday warm up the leftovers join ABC Sports for a great college football doubleheader the action kicks off at noon Texas A&M battling Texas then at 3:30, number 17 Colorado takes on Nebraska Friday on ABC Sports the class of college football Kincaid up on his feet and being helped to the sideline. He was one of the top recruits in Gary Pinkle's first recruiting class here a couple of years ago. 
special teams player at the beginning of the year but with improvement has become a starter as David said. There he is in the crowd taking a look inside there and this is going to be an ugly one. Yeah he gets rolled up right here. Ooh, that did not look good. Nice to see Kincaid at least walking off the field with moderate help there. Joe Ream adds the extra point a seven play 43 yard drive all of it on the ground and the Wildcats lead 17 to nothing. Think you've got college football covered? Think again. Now you can get up to 12 additional games each week with the ESPN Game Plan College Football Pay-Per-View Package. The best games, the major conferences, it's maximum college football. But you can't just tune in, you've got to order. The ESPN Game Plan College Football Pay-Per-View Package. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV, at 1-800-DIRECTV, or Dish Network at 1-800-333-DISH. I'm Max Kellerman. I want to tell you about my new show, Around the Horn. The idea is simple. People here think the people here don't know anything about sports. And the people here hate all the teams from here. Around the Horn is going to bring sports experts from, from here, 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 and, and here, here together, together in a daily discussion about who's better, better than, than who and, and who knows, who knows more. more. And I'm keeping score. Around the Horn, a full contact sports show, weekdays at 5 Eastern on ESPN. Rated E for everyone. This is what it feels like when I start training threes. This is what you'll see when you bring it in my lane. This is what it feels like to be dunked on. This is what it feels like to play in the NBA. NBA 2K3. Sega. Wildcats here in the first half. K-State leading 17 to nothing. They've outgained Missouri 205 to 69. Aaron Sproles with the last touchdown. Put Coach Pinkle's team down by 17. Jared Bright kicks it off and a good one through the back of the end zone. For Missouri, as has been the case throughout the half, begins with very poor starting field position. They've started at their own 17 twice, their own 15, the 20, the 10, the 4, and now the 20 again. Yeah, if there's a positive for Gary Pinkle at this point, it's the fact that he's come back, his team has come back from double-digit deficits against three pretty darn good football teams, Colorado, Iowa State, and Nebraska. And they're going to need another comeback today. I mean, this Kansas State team is rolling, and they're rolling in all three facets of their football team defense, offense, special teams. And we're seeing it this afternoon. Brad Smith trying to escape. And runs out of bounds near the 27 yard line. We'll mark him out at the 26. For a gain of six, it'll be second down and four. I mean, you, you look at this kid and, and as a redshirt freshman, 2,000 yards passing, 1,000 yards rushing. And Bob Stoops, his Oklahoma Sooners lined up against Brad Smith. And this Missouri team had Oklahoma on the ropes. And at the time, the Sooners were ranked number three. And Bob Stoops, after the game, said, hey, and that number 16 made us look very average. They rushed for 213 yards himself. Almost intercepted was that pass. Thrown out in the flat. Bobby Walker eyeing the interception and the return for the touchdown. He's already brought three back for touchdowns this season. And against the Iowa State, Walker had two touchdowns on interceptions within 23 seconds of each other. You know, the first one was a little bit sketchy. Didn't look like he scored, but... Uh, did receive credit for and that's that's really something two touchdowns in less than 30 seconds. And there's an interception by Newman. His fifth of the year. Tenth of his career. And a rare turnover for Missouri. They started the day with the fewest turnovers committed in the country. And they'll add one to the total. 
And I again, a nice break on the ball. Newman is not only a great athlete, great cover guy, but great recognition. And he had that play diagnosed very early. And at one point in the season, Newman was leading this team in interceptions. Walker took the lead, and now they're both tied. Five interceptions apiece for this Wildcat defense. Just the 12th turnover of the season for Missouri. Now tied for the lowest turnover total in the nation. Toledo, West Virginia, Wisconsin. Movement before the snap. Ball start on the offense. It'll be a five yard penalty and remain first down. Coming up on the Capital One halftime show, John Saunders and Terry Bowden bring you all the scores and highlights from college football today. First, the big game of the day seen earlier here on ABC Sports, Ohio State defeating Michigan 14 to 9, a terrific game as usual between these two, those two great rivals. And as a result, Ohio State will be on the way to the Fiesta Bowl. Great to see a Big Ten finally get into that championship game. Well, the whistle stops the play. Well, Missouri's had dreadful field position throughout the half. Dead ball. Dead ball. Delay on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Hey State is starting for the third time today in Missouri territory. Here are the BCS standings entering today's action. Miami number one. They defeated Pittsburgh Thursday night. Ohio State number two. Then Washington State number three. They were hoping for some help from Michigan today. Kansas State 11. The Wildcats ranked 10th in both the major polls. Again the screen. This time to James Terry. And he stopped very near the first down yardage at the 18 yard line. The screen has been a great play today for the Wildcats. Marcus King and Keith Wright. Made the tackle on Terry. 20 yards and a first down for the Wildcats. When you're having this type of success running the football, the type of success the Wildcats are having, it really opens up the pass game. And that's like stealing candy from a baby right there. That's an easy completion. Terry just picking his way downfield. Kansas State with a great mix of run and pass here in the first half. And you know, Missouri only two first down, Sean. You're not going to get it done. The Kansas State offense on the field this much. Three wide receivers, quarterback draw, Roberson. For a short gain, perhaps a yard. Tars Ferguson and Terrell Mills combining on the stop. Under three minutes to go now in the first half. A half dominated by Kansas State, but they've been dominating their opponents. All season long, David mentioned they're first in the nation in scoring defense and second in scoring offense. And as a result, they have the largest average margin per game. Their average margin of victory this year has been 35 points. Unbelievable. They're seven points away from an undefeated season. Three point loss and a four point loss against Texas and Colorado. Roberson down to the 10 yard line. They lost by three to Texas and by four at Colorado. The only losses this year for number 10 Kansas State. Looking for its 10th win of the year at Missouri. This goes to show you, Sean, you got to have some luck to get into that national championship game. I mean, Miami had some luck against Florida State. Iowa Ohio State has escaped two or three times late this season and you look at the close losses of this Kansas State team has suffered and not a shot to be right in that football game with a little luck themselves and on third down and short James Kenny made the tackle on Darren Sproles who did not get the first down and a decision now for Bill Snyder. Also, a little surprised, David, that Missouri doesn't call a timeout here. Try to save some time to do something with the ball when they get it back. And they're already three scores down. You need to capitalize on every chance you get with the ball. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when you got a Brad Smith at quarterback. And as we just mentioned a couple moments ago, only two first downs in the first half, at least to try to get some momentum rolling into the locker room with your offense. Big play here. K State, the best team in the league on fourth down. 
but not this time. Bynum with the hit, the ball came out. And it doesn't matter either way because even if Kansas State got the ball back, they'll turn it over on downs. It was a fumble recovered by Taurus Ferguson. Well, this Missouri team trailed Colorado 27 to 7. And that's a great play penetration on the inside. Antoine Bynum coming off the left end. And another big stop for Missouri. They're trailing by 17 points with give up some points there, and it's going to be awfully tough to come back. Let's see if Missouri can put something together on this drive. And they come out throwing. Now Smith will run, and he is dropped for a loss back at the nine. Melvin Williams, senior from St. Louis. Doesn't look like Missouri's in much of a hurry to go to clock status here. And Williams has had himself a first half. This K State defense has done a great job of controlled rushing when Brad Smith has been in the pocket, and they have not taken their eyes off him. I, th I think they're playing Brad Smith on the run first and then rushing the passer second, and it's been a successful approach here in the first half. Well, they're setting up to take a knee. And Kansas State will take a 17 to nothing lead into the locker room at halftime. Although they may make them punt. They've called the timeout. Third down upcoming. So if they want to avoid punting, Missouri has to run a play that kills eight seconds here. I love this. I think this is great coaching because what's your downside? And if you muff the punt, the ball can't be returned. You can take a shot at blocking the punt here. Got a great return man who already has a touchdown in the first quarter. And they've blocked seven kicks this year. And a huge block punt for a touchdown last week against Nebraska that kept the momentum for this Kansas State team in the first half. Apparently the Missouri folks didn't anticipate that Kansas State might use the timeouts and stop the clock. They just took a knee. They would have been better served running something that ran a few more seconds off the clock. Now one thing you don't do here is you don't put the ball in the air. So you run the football and there's too much time on the clock to have your quarterback, even a Brad Smith, get back in the end zone and try to kill the clock running around in the end zone. I think eight seconds is just too much time. So. Missouri may just have to bite the bullet Sean and you know, run a safe play here and punt the ball away. We could throw the ball deep here. They're running a sweep. Smith just trying to stay in bounds and kill the clock. Did they get the timeout? We'll see. The clock shows all zeros. Will the officials put time back on the clock? Put one Yes, they will. The clock. Timeout. Kansas State gets their third and final timeout of the half. You know, the other option for him there, Sean, was to maybe have Brad Smith use his feet, create some time in the pocket, and then throw the ball deep downfield and use up some of that clock with the ball in the air. And if there's still time, then you go ahead and punt the ball away. I think Brad Smith might have been able to expire the clock using the deep ball. Well, if you're Missouri now, you shouldn't punt. You should just take the snap and run around for one second and take an E. And that's the half. Why would you risk kicking it away, having it blocked and return? Having a bad snap? Well, they'll cover up with some running backs in the backfield and let Brad Smith take a step or two back, go to a knee, and that'll be that. Coach Pinkle was ready to head to the locker room. He thought the half was over because the clock showed all zeros and figure he's got it. He was home. alerted to the fact that there's a second left. Home field clock operator might be helping him out there. K State out of timeout. It's really not an issue with one second left for either team. Been in our ongoing desire to keep you always informed. 
And that's the end of the half. Gary Pinkle trailing Bill Snyder's Wildcats. 17 to nothing at halftime. Let's check in with John and Terry. All right, guys, thanks a lot. And Terry, there was just one team that knew today walk off the field with a victory. They would be playing for the national championship. That team, the Ohio State Buckeyes, but they've been in this position before, and the Michigan Wolverines have upset those seasons. But they said not to be done this time around. Maurice Claret, still injured but able to play. What a big difference. He makes 29 yards. He busts this one, gets it down to the 11-yard line. Well, he's the one guy on their team that can make big plays. When you get those long yardages, they don't have to settle for field goals. He can get them into the end zone because he has such great speed to go with his strength and power. He did just that here from two yards out. Ohio State takes a 7-3 lead. Field goals were keeping Michigan around the game. Ohio State, Craig Krenzel, the quarterback, is sacked for a seven-yard loss, and the offense just was not clicking. But Krenzel goes 26 yards this time to Claret. So he ran the ball. He caught it. Looked like he was waiting to get hit there before he went down. Maurice Hall then from three yards out goes in to score as Ohio State takes the lead. And then John Navarre, one last chance with time gone, gets picked off here towards the end zone by Will Allen. And the Ohio State Buckeyes have survived 14-9, their first perfect regular season since 1979. Craig Krenzel, 10 of 14, 122 yards. Claret, 20 carries for 119 yards. Obviously a better team with Maurice Claret in there. But this Ohio State team won this game the way they've won all season long, by just pulling it out with limited offense and good defense. Is that good enough to get it done for a national championship? John, you know, all the time we talk about what does it take to be a national championship team? What's the most important part of it? It's great defense. If you can play great defense week in and week out, you're going to have a chance to win every game. That's how Ohio's done it, done it week after week. They are the number two defense in the country. They keep people scoring. Michigan did not get a single field touchdown. Yeah, and it reminds me of an Oklahoma team for a couple of years ago that knocked off your dad's team when everyone thought their offense was somewhat limited, but they got the national title. We will continue with more of the Capital One Halftime Show after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hey, Sterling, you remember that thing we were talking about yesterday? What thing we were talking about? You know, if you were still playing, Brian Urlacher. Well, yeah, he's kind of small and kind of slow. Exactly. What was that you were talking about? Well, I'd say I'd either run by him or run over him. And... What's your name again? It's my name. St <laughs> Sterling Sharp. Sterling Sharp. That's what I thought. Hey, yeah. wait a second. Hey, yeah. wait. You can't use... <laughs> that was a yeah, figure of speech. Right wait up, man. Show me some love. Check for me, will you? Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. They've been called a dream team. You look like the son of Ringo Starr and Phyllis Dillon. A gas to watch. You never get any shoplifting in your life? I'd be surprised next year if he did play. It's easier for Mike Tyson to find a place to fight than it is for Trent Dilfer to find a place to play football. This is the best show on television. Tony Kornheiser, Michael Wilbon.